Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying a bomber and using the red head color combination that is so popular with uh, Rapalas. So without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, we're going to start off using a CS42 from Partridge in a size 4. It's their bomber hook. It is my bomber hook of choice and a whole lot of others. And I usually start back here. For bombers, I gotta come up this way anyway, so what's the point of wasting extra thread, right? And let's see here. Just having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Hold on. <laughs> My bobbin. It's a bit tight. So I'm putting on a bit of nose grease. Perfect. Alright, we're going to start by putting our wings on. And I just choose some nice calf tail for that. That's one piece. And it's number four, so you want to take out enough. Alright, let's grab my clipping catcher because these flies are very messy. When I'm taking a clump like that, I'll usually just pull out that little small stuff down the bottom and then I separate them and put them together on this table, which you won't see. But it just helps in the hair stacking process if you're looking for a nice straight tail. There's a lot of people that really could care less, and I'm sure the fish don't care, so I say do what you want to do. Alright, that's a good size for a number four. And I always just gonna grab some head cement behind me, folks. Sorry. For these, I usually always put a tiny little drop of head cement in the back, and I just find, you know, it's just peace of mind for me. I know that it's really not going anywhere. It's not going to fall apart. It shouldn't anyway, but why not? And we're going to come up to the front. You're going to give yourself a little bit of room for the eye. And it's just the same process as we used in the back. And you just kind of measure that up to the back. And you can always adjust this a little bit too. I think we're pretty good there. And I usually trim off just to where the other part is. And I don't bother putting head cement on the front part because you're still going to prop that front wing up and wrap around it. Like there's extra, almost extra fastening going on there, if that's the word I'm looking for. And we come almost to the back, but I don't usually go all the way. I'm also needing some tape. I feel like I was ill prepared for this video. And I just wrap the tape around and all this does is just keep that front wing out of my way while I'm working on the body. And I'm 
missing. Hopefully that's the last thing I have to turn around for. So I'm looking for this pattern in particular, I'm looking to break this up into threes. And I find the best way to do that, because once you start spinning deer hair on this, it's really hard to keep track uh, where you were with things. Um, so I want to be right about there. And I think we're ready to start spinning. So first we're going to use is uh, reindeer. Very pure white reindeer. It's nice stuff. Right, a friend hooked me up with this that wishes to be unnamed. But if you ever get a chance to get a hold of some reindeer, it's super cool stuff. And you notice I really don't do uh, a lot of compressing of the hair on the first couple um, pieces I put on, first couple clumps, because I don't want to push that down over the tail. I want to have a nice base to push against. So I just kind of reserve that for the next one we put on after this. But just look at this stuff. Isn't that amazing? Very soft and very similar to caribou. I'm just going to push that in a bit just to get as much as we can in there. And I'm going to do a few wraps here too. I have, uh, I know I'm not the first person to tie a bomber like this. It was sort of pointed out to me. Um, however, it's the first time I've seen the bomber. And uh, the reason why I did it is I used to do a, quite a bit of bass fishing when I lived in Nova Scotia. And I had this one lure made by Rapala that was just a killer color combination. I mean, everything from chain pickerel to bass to spring salmon would smash this thing. And anyway, it became one of my favorites. And uh, I was sitting there thinking about a bo bomber color combo I could do. And I said, you know what? gonna try that so that's the reason why I did it so I'm not claiming that I started it but mine is the first one I ever seen and we're getting pretty close to that black mark now we could probably put on a little bit more looking nice and we're gonna do some wraps now because we want to try to get that hair to come back there as far as we can and we want it to be held back too alrighty our next is we're gonna be using dyed white tail belly in a red color much different there, there's a lot of difference in the texture between these two um, two very different materials to work with but this is where my passion is I, I love working with deer or any hollow uh, fur that you use on dry flies deer caribou roe deer Reindeer. I love it. I love trimming hair. 
and recently been tying a few wet flies and I realize how foreign it seems to me now. Nice thing about deer is that it seems as though there's a deer hair fly for every species in the world. I think that's going to be good. So I'm just going to do a wrap or two here. And then I'm just going to pull this up, exposing the eye of the hook. And I'm just going to come around it a few times and I'm going to tie off. That way we can get this bobbin out of our way for the trimming process. this out of the way and we're going to move our weight basket up under the fly. Alright, so I gotta sorry I'm gonna have to move this to make my cut because I gotta be able to gauge where I'm at. But basically I'm holding the scissors on an angle when I come in. And I'm just kind of coming near where I should be because I know I can fine tune this after the fact. Just doing a general cone shape. This is only how I trim them, guys. Like, don't feel like, you know, this is the be all end all. There's people that do their bombers in cigar shapes that work great and you know just whatever you feel comfortable and how you like to fish them is how you should tie them all right I think that's gonna be good for that I'm just gonna take these uh, oh shoot hopefully that didn't go too much out of focus I didn't mean to move that And I'm just taking a pair of scissors and coming around and just rounding off this head so it gives me a better idea where I'm at. And we're going to do the same back here. It's hard to tell the white cap tail from the white reindeer at this point, but we'll sort all that out. For any of you who haven't, who hasn't ever uh, hooked a salmon, an Atlantic salmon on a bomber, boy, I'll tell you. There is hardly any better feeling in the world to see that fish come up, especially when he rises first and doesn't commit to it right away. Just shows you a bit of interest. Oh wow, it is killer. Alright, so now I'm just going to point this over my way. And I know that I usually use TM Co. scissors too, but I just kind of realized lately that, you know, they're discontinued. I have them there, but yeah, I, I can do the job without them too. These shore scissors actually work pretty good for this. I love the curved blade.
I'm going to do some fine tuning now, so I'll switch back over. And basically, I'm just trying to get that shape that I'm looking for, guys, and I'm just taking a little bit off at a time to accomplish that. I've actually got my uh, bomber tying down pretty good timing now. Not here, because I'm explaining things as I go, but when I'm uh, tying for Atlantic Rivers Outfitting, I'm usually between 10 and 12 minutes per bomber, which is excellent for me. <laughs> just taking your time and taking little pieces at a time. You can always go back and take more but you can't always grow more deer hair if you take too much so... Alright, we'll just go with that. I think that's good enough. 100% we're going to find pieces though that uh, drive me nuts. That's alright. So I'm just going to get rid of the scrap basket. Get my thread. And we're going to come in and get our thread on there. Cut off the access. We'll just do a single wing on this one. So when I do this now, I just come up around the wing, pull the wing up, come in between the wing and the eye, down, back on up around, and then back between the wing and the eye, and your wing will come up perfectly. So we're going to come back to the eye, leave it there, and we need to pick out a piece of hackle now. Find a general rule is you kind of want your hackle to be close to that hook point. Let's hope I got a piece here. That should do it. We're going to find out. We're using METS grade 2 today. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's going to be actually a little bit longer than what I need, but I will take it. And all I do is just wrap that around there a couple times around the eye and then you take that stem and you fold it over and wrap a few more times. Now that feather is locked in there, it ain't going nowhere. And you're going to come in and start your wraps. Guys, wrap it around your hook as much as you want. You can do three wraps, you can do ten wraps. Don't let anybody tell you that there's an amount of wraps you gotta do. You make whatever you wanna make. We're gonna come up and then we're just gonna bring that thread back. And then I just kinda wiggle it up again. Usually I wiggle it my way back down too, and all that does is just kind of spread between the deer hair and doesn't leave too big of a track behind. And I'm going to come back here and just cut this feather off. And what I'm doing this, so I use a needle bottle with my head cement and uh, I do come in back here where I tied off at just because I want that extra level of protection. And you don't need to put a lot. That was way more than I needed. I wasn't watching. Oh, wow. That's all right. That'll float. You don't need to put a lot there, but it does help to put a little bit. Your bomber isn't going to sink because you put a bit of head cement on it. Don't worry about that. Just If you want to just guarantee that that's not coming apart prematurely, then that's the way to do it. And there it is, folks. That is a redhead bomber that I 
created to copy a uh, Rapala pattern I seen. So thank you very much for popping by. I really appreciate it. If you have time and you feel like doing it, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe. If not, just happy to have you here. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.